Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From r &E Music, your mom and pop guitar shop, deep in the heart of Canton, Texas. That's where we're at. Yep, that's where we're at. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. Deep in the heart of Canton. Yeah, Texas. Canton. Canton, Texas. Not to be confused with Ohio. Not that there's anything wrong with Ohio. Or any other state or that has any a any other state, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to answer your questions. That's what we're going to do. I'm so excited. First question, Al broke it. <laughs> Howdy Ryan and Angela, in your opinion, what are the 10 songs every guitar player should know? Oh man, well, that is uh, a lot of question. That, that's a lot of question there, man. Yeah. I might actually make a separate video to answer that, because there's that's that's a loaded question. It depends on the style, you know. Are you a rock guy? Are you a country guy? Are right. you a, a pop right. artist? You know, mm, there's a lot to go into that. I may try to address that um, in another video, but I'll give you the top one. Mm -hmm. My top one. We'll do number one. Okay. Stairway to Heaven. Every guitar player should play Stairway to Heaven. Yeah. We're gonna make a sign for R&B music. I've been meaning to do this for nine years now. Yeah. It yeah. says more stairway yeah not no stairway yeah Sari denied more stairway mm -hmm. and r music it's more stairway all the time yeah all day every day all day every day do you have one do i have yeah. one um not really <laughs> <laughs> not so much not so much what's one song every singer should learn to sing um I don't know. I will always love you. Yeah? Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good stretch for vocals. Good. That would stretch me. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Either one. The Dolly Parton version, which is the original, or um, the Whitney Houston version from Bodyguard. Whitney. Yeah. All right. Well, there's our top one. And maybe I'll do a separate video on that, because I think that'd be, that'd be an interesting video to shoot. Mm -hmm. So thanks for the question, Al. Broke it. Friday night in Texas, y'all. People got them loud pops on them trucks driving mm -hmm. around. Next question. Dastardly Dave. Got a question. So excited. Have you ever gone to a concert and one of the opening bands was awesome, even though you had not heard any of their material prior to the show? Years ago, I saw Isle of Q. More recently, I saw the Hand Grenades <laughs> when I was in Detroit. The Hand Grenades. That's so good. That's they were probably cool. explosively good, right? Mm-hmm. All right, all right. So funny. Um, you know what? Uh, yes, actually, I have. The most recent one I can think of was when me and the bitter bass player went to go see Bowling for Soup, mm -hmm. along with my son, Nicholas. And one of the opening bands was called The Dolly Rots. The Dolly Rots. And they were really pretty good. I had never heard of them. I don't know why they're not a huge pop punk band when that was a more of a thing than it is now. Mm -hmm. But they were really good. Started following them on Instagram. They seemed like really fun people. And <laughs> uh, Paul has already bought all their CDs, mm. and he's like, "You got to listen to this man. Their their CDs are really good." So most recently, that's who I saw, the Dolly Rots. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> speaking of the devil, it's Paul DeJaro. He will probably agree with me on them. He really liked them. So, mm -hmm. um, any that you can think of, or a surprise, right. someone you never heard of that they blew you away? I guess I don't go to concerts. I know. I noticed. <laughs> you never take me, so it's I, not like I don't want to go to concerts. You just don't want to take me to any of the ones I actually <laughs> I go just, to. I took you to see Alter Bridge on your birthday. If you bring up Alter Bridge one more time. <laughs> I don't that does not count you still owe me for that I do yeah no since I never go to concerts I can't answer that question so <clears throat> so there you go dastardly Dave <laughs> 
There you go. Next question, please. Todd Bogley, would it be cheaper, less of a buy-in if y'all sell PRS import models in the store, but order S2 and core models when someone wants one? And if you sold ESP, LTD, and sold Takamini, owned by ESP, would that be easier buy-in? Hope all is well. Y'all's way. <laughs> Y'all. Y'all. Thanks, Todd. Well, actually, I did talk to PRS when I was at the NAM show. And the, they do have a program where you can become a PRS SE dealer. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was SE and the uh, S2 models, which is the more affordable American ones, but not the core models. Yeah. <clears throat> or it was just SE. Um, so there is a buy-in. I mean, it, it's still, you know, a five-digit <laughs> a five-digit buy-in. Um, to do that, so it's significant. I mean, over ten grand. Yeah. To do, just to be just an SE dealer. I last time I checked, which was a couple of years ago, it may have changed, but that is an option. You do not have to buy in and carry the core models. Yeah. But I I cannot remember though, if you're allowed to do the core models or not. I'm not sure because I think it is like if you want to get the cores, you've got to spend the money to get the cores. I think. Not 100% on that because it's been a while since I talked to him. Yeah. But I did talk to him and that is an option. And, you know, yes, it, it is possible. They, they understand that not every dealer is a large, huge dealer. Mm -hmm. I talked to the guy who's like running the joint now. It's not Paul. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul's the face of PRS. But there's, you know, they have a CEO who's really running everything. Super nice guy. Very cool to talk to him. I recognize him from videos. I'm like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he said, I mean... They have programs for smaller dealers, but it's still, you know, it's still more money than I want to spend at the moment. So now as far as ESP and Takamini, um, you have to, they each have their own thing. So, I mean, Takamini has its own buy-in and ESP has its own buy-in. So you can't really mix and match. Like if it's like 12 guitars, you can't really get like six LTDs and six Takaminis. I don't, that doesn't really work that way. So you've got your own, I think each has its own basic buy-in um kind of like Schecter and wild audio uh, we are Schecter dealers mm -hmm. and now wild audio is open up to the public it's not just you know an exclusive guitar center thing now like it used to be mm -hmm. um so now you know regular regular dealers can buy wild audio but even though i'm a Schecter dealer i can't order just one wild audio like mm -hmm. wild audio has its own buy-in Right. Just for their stuff, even though Schechter is the one who warehouses and, you know, logistically handles all of their stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit like that. But um, thanks for the question, Todd. You know, we'll see what happens in the future. We're kind of getting things reorganized a little bit and seeing what we want to focus on. But great question, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Next question. I'm so excited. Nick Khan. Hi, Nick. <laughs> How are you? Hope you're surviving the lava flows. Uh, Aloha, Ryan and Angela. Aloha, Nick. Aloha. When are you coming to Hawaii? So excited in Honolulu. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when we're coming to Hawaii. I don't know. When are we going? Someday. 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 Yeah. Someday we'll come. Yeah. Um, it's nice to know that we know someone in Hawaii, so when we do go there... Yeah. We got someone to show us around. Yes. Not in 2018. I can I can firmly say or 19. Well, we don't know. Or 20. He, we don't know. <laughs> I'm not, not going to I'm not going to say it's not going to happen in 19 or 20. I'm just saying it's not going to happen in 2018. Yeah. However, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> uh, thanks for the question, Nick. I wish we could, man. I, I wish we could in 2018. That'd be killer. That'd be awesome. It yeah. would be. Feel my earrings off. Uh-oh. About to get serious. Show sure is. Well, while you're taking earrings off, see what Paul sent me. I'm working on my album. Ah, should you be? Yeah. Nerd. <laughs> Next question. Stephen Scharf. <laughs> my question to you is, have you ever heard of or seen or played a... Legator guitars. Also, are you guys going to start carrying Michael Kelly guitars? They would have excellent 
They have excellent Telecasters and beautiful Les Paul single cut styles of guitars. I think they would probably sell really well for you just because of the affordability mm -hmm. and the and something. Oh, and the high quality. Mm -hmm. Keep up the good work. Keep on rocking in the free world. Alrighty. I have heard of Legator or Legator. <laughs> If you're in Florida, you would call them Legator. Mm -hmm. Legator guitars. Louisiana. <laughs> Louisiana. <laughs> Louisiana Gator guitars. Uh, I have not ever played one, but I have heard of them. And I think I've seen some videos, but I've never, I don't think I've ever put my hands on one personally. Yeah. We have talked about Michael Kelly guitars. That's one of the companies that has been on our radar the last several years. Yeah. I have played a few at NAMM, <clears throat> um, played some when we were at Flipside Music in Denver, Colorado, who makes no videos. Mm -hmm. He should do some videos of some uh, yeah. <laughs> Michael Kelly guitars because he's got them. <laughs> I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, I think they're great. and uh, They were on our radar as well. Um, so maybe someday. Maybe someday. Mm -hmm. I was impressed. I, I don't have anything negative to say about Michael Kelly. I think they would be great as well. Uh, thanks so much. We will keep on rocking in the free world, Stephen. Yes, we will. Or we will, what we, do. we will attempt to. Yep. Next question. Walking Dead 1369. There's a rumor going around Slash is looking into buying BC Rich. My question is, what would it mean for Gibson to lose its biggest face man? Uh, you know, I watched that video that was the Tone King and Phil McKnight and Tone King. They did a whole video about Slash buying BC Rich. Mm -hmm. It's all speculation at this point. I don't know that they said yes. Yeah. He is for sure buying it. I just it's it's talking, um, and their video was pretty interesting. I watched it, but um, what would it mean for Gibson to lose its biggest face guy? You know, they would probably be fine. <laughs> I, I think they would probably survive. I think losing Slash is not the biggest problem they have at the moment. I think reorganizing and their bankruptcy and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Slash is a legend and an icon, and I think he definitely gave Gibson a boost back when Guns N' Roses was at its apex. Um, but at this point in the game, you know, I, I don't think people are going to quit buying Les Pauls if Slash stopped playing them. Yeah. He's not going to stop playing them, I don't think. Yeah. Be more likely he would probably play his Les Pauls and play BC Rich. Yeah. That's what I think, you know. I don't think he would totally leave. I mean, he could, you know. Who knows? He could. It depends. You know, I would never would have thought, I never would have thought Zach would have left Gibson. Right. Because he was all Gibson, 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 Gibson for forever. But he did. So it could happen. But I think, I don't think it's going to, like it wouldn't bring Gibson down or anything. Right. Because I think people, when people think of Slash, they still think of Les Paul's. And when they think of Guns N' Roses, they think of Slash playing a Les Paul. So I think people are still going to buy Les Pauls because Slash played them for 30 years. Sure. You know. What do you think? No. I... <laughs> you don't care? Well, it's not that I don't <laughs> care. It's just that I didn't notice. So it's just... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that, he might be buying another guitar company, supposedly. Yeah. Is the rumor in the rumor mill. <clears throat> you know. He's not getting any younger. <laughs> he, he ain't getting any younger. He's probably not getting any more popular. It's always either. great to diversify. Yeah. He's always played BC Riches, though. He's mm -hmm. he's played them. So he's known for playing them as well. So I think he could get away with playing both. Yeah. Now, what Gibson says about that, who knows? Who knows? But maybe he's not as good for Gibson brand now as he was, say, 10 years ago. True, true. Or 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. How many people are buying Slash Signature? That's what I'm saying. Balls? It's like, just, just saying that so many X. So many amount of people are just like huge Slash fans, which, you know. Yeah. I think a lot, I think overall, most all guitar players can appreciate his talent, but not everybody is a fan. Yeah. So That's I true. think him not being there is not going to affect as many people as probably yeah. we think. Probably not, because I think people are still going to want to buy a Gibson. Because I know there's times when I see him, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot about him. He's still around. <laughs> He's so, still doing things. So honestly, you know, I think that that's not that I'm the voice of, you know, because I don't play guitars or anything. So it's like, 
but I forget about him. So I'm sure there's other people that were like, oh yeah, you know, life moves on. I haven't bought a Slash record since Use Your Illusion 1 or 2. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm a guitar guy and I like him. Yeah. But I haven't bought, I didn't even buy any Velvet Revolver records. Mm -hmm. But I still don't have a Les Paul either. <laughs> so, great question, man. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. You never but, know. Yeah. You guys say what you, tell us what you think. Let us know what you think. Would Gibson be fine without Slash? Or is the company going to just crash and burn? Right. More than it already has. Right. Next question. Blaine Ludman. Question. So when is Angela going to play her guitar in a video? <laughs> what is your favorite genres to sing, be it in your home, car, or church group? What involvement do you have with your church, and what denomination does it fall under? What is the demographic of music listeners around your area? And finally, what's the best 2x12 or 4x12 that comes with vintage 30s in it? Thanks. Keep the faith alive. And I am still waiting for Ryan's EP. To come to fruition, LOL piece. That's funny, because Paul was just busting my chops about it. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, when is Angela going to play her guitar in a video? Probably not anytime soon. Mm -mm. <laughs> I think I'm not going to do it unless I play it really well, and I'll have time to put in into it to play it well, so it's not going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> I'm not going to be, you know, make myself look foolish. You're not going to embarrass yourself. For the, just because of my, you know, People want to see it because I, I just don't like that. I, I either do stuff well or I don't, and I don't do it until I am able to do it well. So anything when it comes to it, anything. So. So not anytime soon. Not anytime soon, and I'm nowhere near, anywhere near. It's his idea most of the times that I have guitars, not. Hey, you should get this guitar, honey. Yeah, it's not me. <laughs> it's not because she wants one. Yeah. <laughs> So don't hold your breath for that. Mm -mm. Uh, what are your favorite genres <laughs> to sing in your home car or church group? We talked about that. You're more into like R&B soul stuff. Yeah, I like anything that has just like a lot of passion to it, and usually that falls into for me the R&B, you know, pop type stuff, ballads, stuff like that. Power ballads? <clears throat> Not necessarily. <laughs> oh wait, that's me. Yeah. Metallica. Yeah. And or church, car, um, car. I haven't really been singing a lot in the car, really. Um, you have the Greatest Showman CD in the car. Yeah, but I actually haven't listened to the Greatest Showman in over a month. Mm -hmm. I haven't. Um, but no, I just whatever pops in my head is what I'll sing, and usually I don't. Here lately, I've just been really thinking and going over my day, so my thoughts have been preoccupied. I haven't really been singing. Um, What's a favorite song to sing in church? I like strict worship. I do not like singing radio songs in church. I don't like if it's on the radio, unless it's a, originated in the church by a popular church. I don't like singing it. I, I don't like songs about myself. I like songs that glorify God that are very moving. Again, songs that are very moving and powerful. Because you have contemporary Christian radio, which is sort of yes. like poppy stuff. And then you yeah. have... There's like a different genre. Which is almost borderline country gospel. Yeah. It's yeah. like story time. Yeah. It's like it tells and a story. I'm like, My grandma raised me right many years ago. You know, it's like that's great. Slipped in but, through the back door. But sat I down on don't want to sing along with that. Sing a story. Yeah. yeah. So hmm. That's usually where I go to whenever I'm singing. <laughs> But I'm also moved by just like instrumental, you know, just really beautiful pieces. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what involvement do you have with your church, and what denomination does it fall under? Oh, this is a this is an interesting question. You know, yeah, um, we had this conversation yesterday. We just talked about this with somebody. Yeah, uh, I will say it this way: I am actually I'm employed. Yes, we're both employed. We're both contract employees, not regular employees but like you know contract employees we we mm -hmm. i play guitar at the methodist church here in town she works in the nursery at mm -hmm. the methodist in the at the methodist church mm -hmm. and she's same church and she teaches in their pre-k um that they have base there mm -hmm. um, but we are not methodists i'm not a methodist i didn't grow up in a methodist church i did that's not my thing um i'm just kind of a hired gun essentially mm -hmm. um, now there's I like everybody there. I have really good friends that are on the worship team that I play on. I'm friends mm -hmm. with everybody there. Um, 
But I wouldn't consider myself a Methodist. Or a part, really, of any denomination. No. Really, honestly. Yeah, we're kind of... Uh, none of the above. <laughs> I grew up at the Baptist Church here yes. in Canton, Texas. Baptist yeah, Church, up, Methodist Church. Grew up non-denominational, full gospel. Not Pentecostal. We weren't dress wearing, no makeup, long hair. Um, and there's even degrees of that. But it was more non-denominational. We had a praise band. And there was a lot of clapping and singing. Raise your hands. Hallelujah. Tambourines? Uh, no, not really all the time. We had maybe one or two ladies that would show up with it, but it wasn't like a thing at our church. Mm -hmm. most Banners? Of mm -mm. Yeah, every once in a while growing up. But um, right now, I don't consider myself a denomination because there's so many things wrong in each denomination. And um, people outside of Christianity have such a negative... Uh, mm -hmm. thought towards so many different denominations other than the the branch of the actual root of Christianity. Um, so I like to just say that I'm a Christian mm -hmm. and I belong to the body of Christ, which is the church. You know, we like to say going to church, but really it's the body of Christ is the church. And there's just different people who like to label themselves because people are human and they like to disagree. We like labels. And we like to label each other. Um, but I don't believe in, in all that. I believe if you are a believer and you're a Christian, then you're my brother or sister in Christ. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, you, whether that makes you Methodist, Church of Christ, Church of God, Baptist, Southern Baptist, Missionary Baptist, <laughs> you know, non-denominational, Pentecostal, Assemblies of God, Pentecostal Holiness. There's so many different branches out there. Um, I just, if you believe what the Bible says, then you're my brother or sister. So I, I prefer that than yeah. underneath the banner of something that a man made, you know? Yeah. Cause they didn't have denominations back in the new Testament No, when the church first formed yeah. <laughs> and they were getting killed and crucified and, and fed to lions and persecuted because they believed in a guy. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have denominations back then, but now we're all, we're all splintered into 20, 20 or 30,000 different factions, mm -hmm. essentially. But we're kind of, yeah, we're kind of, we don't subscribe to any specific denomination nope. at the moment. We don't. We have church at home. Mm -hmm. And we believe in the Word of God. Believe in Jesus. We believe Jesus is the Son of God. I like Jesus. Yes. He's the guy I like. <laughs> That's who we follow. We're followers of Christ. Followers of Jesus. <laughs> He's, you know. But even that means different things to different, different people. Different people. Yeah. But I believe everything in the Word of God. Or we, we believe everything in the Word of God. So, yeah. There's so many different weird things out there. And it gets so confusing sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I like to make it clear and keep it simple. <laughs> if you're a believer and I'm a believer, we're both believers. We're part of the same family. We're both part of the church. If, we're, if you're, you know. Yeah. We may not believe everything the same. Yeah. And it's just like being in, in any family. Um, I have siblings, but none of us are alike. And all of us had different world views. Everybody, every single, all six of us have approached life in diff six different ways. But we're all family. We're still family. Our father is still our father. So it's, um, I have to look at it that way. And our commonality is, is that we all have the same father. So... Um, I think if we look at it that way and spend more time on that same thing, then there would be less less division as much. Um, and I think we would love each other the way Jesus had intended it and how God intended it for the whole world to love each other. So We made it way too complicated. Way too Jesus complicated. Jesus said, love God and love your neighbors and love yourself. <laughs> don't be a jerk. Yes. Just don't be a jerk. It's kind Pretty of, much. Well, it's, it's real simple. <laughs> Serve one another, love one another, and... Don't be an a-hole. <laughs> yeah, tough. That's the it's message, tough, though. message translation. It's tough. That's the Ryan translation. <laughs> yes. But it's true. Don't be a jerk face. So, that's, you know, we have been a part of or and have family members in different denominations, and where we have found ourselves after 21 years together and 19 years of marriage and... X number of churches under our belts is that we are the church, the church. Hmm. 
we are a part of the church. So um, we love the way God intended it to love and the way Jesus commands us to love. I'm just saying, I treat yeah. people the way that I want to be treated. Now, if they don't want to treat me that way, that's on them. Yeah. You know, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, next question. What is the demographic of music listeners around our area? A lot of country, I think. Yeah, I have no idea. A lot Country and rock. And pop, I guess. It depends. Are you talking about adults or kids? Because all the kids around here listen to all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But adults? Yeah, it just depends. I think there's a lot of country. But a lot of rock, too. Yeah. Like I th- classic I think rock. It, I think it varies because we have such a, a diverse group of people in our in our area that age is not people in races, but people in ages. That, you know, I hear some people do covers of, you know... The cranberries, and then they'll come out and they'll do something, you know, Credence, and they'll do Led Zeppelin, or they'll do some Red Dirt Country, and they'll do. It's just everybody likes everything around here. Yeah. But I think the biggest heartbeat is bluesy country. Southern rock. Southern rock. <laughs> Not a lot of full-on hardcore metal. No, but I think a lot of a lot of our generation. Lot still likes that, you know, hair metal type stuff. Guns and Roses. Yeah. Black Album Metallica. Bon Jovi. Camera stopped, so I lost my thought, my train of thought. Um. Yeah, there's a lot of people who listen to hair bands. Yeah. Just generic popular stuff. Mm-hmm. For the most part. Yeah. Um, best cab with vintage thirties. I like Mesa cabs, but they're kind of pricey. Unless you can find them used. Um, I'm a big fan of the Mesa Boogie cabs. Those are great. I would get one of those if you can afford it, or you can find one used. Those are killer. Uh, best ones on a budget. The Harley Benton ones I hear come with V30s, and they're pretty affordable, so might be worth a shot. Just depends. Uh, next question Scott H. Question Do y'all ever eat at the Dairy Palace? <laughs> When my wife's sister's family lived in Longview, she would meet up with her sister at Dairy Palace in Canton. It was halfway between her homes. We do eat at Dairy Palace. Mm -hmm. Not Not, super often. No. I mean, there's been like a year where we never ate there. Like, Yeah. We could go months and months without eating there. But mostly because we don't really go on that side of town. And it's a bit pricey. <laughs> it's not McDonald's prices. Yes. When we're trying to but feed all four McDonald's of us. But it's not McDonald's flavor. It's it's No, it's better. real home cooked real food. It's, it's good. real food. It really is. Ain't it's no good. dollar menu there. No. It's it's real good. Yes. If anybody goes, we recommend trying Dairy Palace. Yeah. Their burgers are awesome. Their curly fries are awesome. Their shakes. Their pancakes. Real ice cream. You know, they serve pancakes there. Yeah, they're like it's uh, <laughs> Pancake Palace. I and think they're going to change their, their name. And their biscuits are like like giant. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's good. We do eat there really just on special occasions though. Yeah. When we're trying to bring, when people come in, we're like, hey, you have to try this place out. Or, you know, <laughs> we're like, let's go on a date. Well, there's not really, it's not like you can go to the movies unless we drive to go and last time we're too tired to do that so we're like hey let's just go to Dairy Palace it's open 24 hours so we'll just go to Dairy Palace yeah it is open 24 hours yep. that's great if you ever come through Kenton you should definitely stop yeah lots of famous Palace. people have stopped at yeah. Dairy Palace lots of famous people Ike that's, from Flipside Music that's right he, um, he calls it mm-hmm. Butter Palace he yeah. got confused so Adam that. Lamar from Warefoot has been there yeah yeah Robert Baker yeah Robert Baker's eating Robert at Butter Baker Palace yeah Paul DeJaro, the bitter bass man. The bitter bass man. Mm-hmm. Uh, we used to eat there when we were in high school and college a lot. We'd go to like 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. and get some pancakes at 2 a.m. in the morning. It was good. Yeah, because it's right on our, a major highway that goes straight through Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Mm-hmm. I-20. <laughs> I-20 goes straight through the south. So it it's right there and it's hard to miss. So, Yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm hungry. Thanks, Scott. Awesome. 
biscuits and gravy. Oh man, I want, I want, I want the curly fries and a burger. Yeah, bacon good. cheeseburger. Oh man, dang it. it. Next question, Loner Caveman. What is your favorite guitar wiring mod? Well, you know, I've never really modded any of the wiring on my guitars. Mm -mm. Not anything particularly. <laughs> so I've never really played around with that too much. Um, I don't guess I have one. I do like, I do have a couple of my guitars do have the coil split and, uh, I do use it sometimes, mm -hmm. occasionally. I actually used it today. One of my Schecters has a coil split on the EMG 89. But I don't really, I don't mess around with it so much. I just play, you know. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite wiring mod, Loner Caveman? And everyone else watching, tell us your favorite wiring mm -hmm. mod, if you have one, on your guitars. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Joe McKinney, howdy, Ryan and Angela. What is a good age for kids to start learning to play an instrument? Doesn't have to be guitar. Same for vocal lessons. Hmm. Um, we might have talked about this. I feel like we've yeah. talked about this recently. Yeah, I think in a, in a way. Roughly. Okay. Um, like piano, I think five is good. What about ukulele? What do you think? Ukulele, five is good. Five is good for uke. Mm -hmm. Guitar. <clears throat> and all the years I've been teaching private music, Usually 11 or 12 on guitar or 13, 11, 12, 13. Yeah. And it depends on the kid. Too. Depends on the kid. I've had some 10 year olds. Nine year, and nine year olds. Yeah, I've had some 10 year olds who started and kind of stuck with it. But the younger they are on guitar, the less they sort of stick with it. The ones who seem to do really well, it's usually at least 10 or 11. Aubrey at least. Right? Yeah, well, she's an exception. Yeah. yeah. She's not <clears throat> the norm, but. Um, Probably not younger than nine. Mm -hmm. you know, but every kid's different. But yeah. um, a little bit older for guitar because it's a little more challenging. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you got to build up calluses on your fingertips. And the little bitty kiddos don't usually want to play right. long enough to get calluses. Which yeah. means you're not practicing enough to really make a lot of improvement. It's not a good idea. If, your kid, if you know your kid is not really motivated in anything and you're just trying to get them to be motivated in something... Signing them up for guitar lessons usually isn't it. Mostly because... It's um, not easy. It's Right. It's not easy. It takes a lot of work and a lot of dedication. And if they haven't shown any dedication to anything else, they're not going to have any dedication to guitar. I would start them off on something like ukulele or piano or something that won't be too much stress on them mm -hmm. to play. And it's immediate satis satisfaction when it comes to music that they're actually almost immediately playing something that doesn't require too much, you know, calluses and their dexterity. It's it's more like a, well, ukulele is a minor motor skill, but um, piano is a major, like, motor skill. It's not, like, fine, you know, little tuning things with your fingers, but I, I've noticed that with parents. They were like, well, I want them to try something. I'm like, okay, so if your kid is like not motivated, doesn't like doing their schoolwork, it is pulling teeth even just to get them brush to brush their teeth, um, then guitar is not there, not the instrument for them yet. Yeah, if it's their idea. Yes, and they've been kids bugging been, you. Kids been begging to do it. Begging, and any any time there's a guitar at family functions or grandma's house or uncle has one or aunt has one, and they're always picking it up and they've kind of figured it out or they're looking on YouTube and their favorite, you know, person that they watch has a guitar, then it's probably something that they'll probably stick with but for at least even a year, depending on the kid. So I would look at that. Same thing kind of with vocal lessons. We don't start vocal lessons until junior high when they're about sixth grade, which is 11 to 12 years old, mm -hmm. mostly because they're still developing and it's very frustrating. I have a young lady who just turned 11 and I made an exception for her because she was turning 11. She was turning 11 and her voice is changing drastically. So it was a lot of frustration for her and she just doesn't understand why she can't do certain scales and certain vocal exercises. And it's only because she's just maturing. Mm -hmm. um, by the time usually, for boys it's different. Boys' voice tend to change all the way up until almost 18. 
For girls, their voices are pretty much set in stone by the time they're 14, 15 years old. So um, those are usually the better ages for them, guys. It just depends on the on the guy. But for young girls, uh, sixth grade usually because mm -hmm. they're already gone through are in full swing of puberty and their voices have cha are changing. Um, you usually have has changed, um, and it's not as frustrating for them to have somebody tell them that doesn't sound good, and it, they won't take it as personal as a child that's younger to take voice lessons and that's voice coach lessons now if you have somebody who just teaches music that they're like oh no we're just gonna learn the song and sing it for fun then go by by all means i don't like wasting my time like that <laughs> um and it's the truth i just don't i've i've tried to do it and it's more frustrating than anything so um i think that the older they get the better it is for voice lessons yeah. especially when they're they know exactly what they want to do. Either I want to be a choir director when I get older, or I want to lead worship, or I want to, I want to you know, I want to sing. And I have one young lady, she was like, I want to be on stage. I want to be the next big thing. I'm like, okay, if you're working that, um, Anna Lee. Oh. And I was like, okay, go for it, girl. And uh, and she has a very specific goal. And she, you can tell she's laser focused. Like, I know what I have to do to make this happen. And this is one of my steps. Focus. So, um, I love that. I love that. But an eight year old, a seven year old, they, their dream, they just love to sing around the house and that's great. Let them do it. Let them have fun. Mm -hmm. Put them in pageants, put them in plays, musicals, all kinds of stuff to help them cultivate that fun and keep it fun for them until it's time to coach. Yeah. So good answer. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Joe. Next question. Jesse Barrera. They sell this thing called a flask water. It works. Great video as always. Yeah, we actually have one hanging. I got one. Room. It's over there. That dang fly last week, because he was in my video that morning, and then he was in the Ask Our Name video that he, he would never land. Yeah, never. He was, I got I got the flask water. I was waiting for him. Come on. Come he was on. a smart fly. Come on. Come on. <laughs> they gotta land on something before you can swat him. Yeah. He never landed. Yeah. I guess he's dead. I haven't seen him in a while though. One of our they, spotters. They don't have a got. long shelf life. I think it's only yeah, like they don't live a hours. long time. <laughs> that guy, he snuck in through a window or a door or something. Something. Mm -hmm. um, do I? Do you like Ibanez guitars, and are they mainly metal guitars? Um, I don't have anything against Ibanez guitars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've owned one in my life when I was much younger, yeah. and I didn't keep it for very long because. It super frustrated me. I never had a guitar with a Floyd Rose trim style system, and I changed the strings and I put yeah. different gauge, and it was I didn't know what to do. It was, and then the input jack crapped out very quickly. So I was like, Nah, you know what? I'm gonna just take this back and get me an Epiphone Les Paul. <laughs> so um, now I have played several. Now as an adult, and I've really kind of dug a few of them. Um, I'm not really a super thin, wafer thin, wizard neck kind of guy, so the crazy thin necks don't really do it for me so much. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't mind having an Ibanez if it was nice, you know, I wouldn't turn one down if somebody wanted to give me one or buy me one, but uh, they're not really my thing. You know, Art has got quite a few Ibanez guitars. Mm -hmm. Are they mostly metal guitars? Well, I think that's the marketing. That's what most people think of. Now they do have some very nice, um, like jazz, semi hollow body, art core guitars. Yeah. That, uh, when I worked at another music store <laughs> years ago, they were really great. Like if you get, you know, Ibanez, they're sort of jazz, you know, 335 style bodies. Those are great guitars, but that's not really what they're known for. So I think they get pigeonholed for sure as metal. Like you don't see any Ibanez tellies. Or Ibanez, you know, Les Paul style guitars. So I think they're definitely the more shreddy, you know, Steve Vai, Joe Satriani. I mean, I think that's what people associate with Ibanez. Mm -hmm. um, it's not all they make. I mean, it's like that or jazz. <laughs> right. So shred, metal, or jazz. And I think that's probably fairly accurate. But they cater to that group and that demographic, and they do it very well. Um, but yeah, they're not really my thing. But 
I don't have anything negative to say about them. Yeah. Other than they're just, I never really clicked with one. Maybe I haven't found the right one. <laughs> Maybe. Thanks for the question, Jesse. Paul Liu, late entry. Have you heard the Mesa Boogie Mini Rectifier? What are your thoughts on the amp? Thanks. Uh, I have heard one. Yeah. I think they're great. I like the, um, the recto verb. If I were going to get one, I wouldn't get the plain mini rec. I would get the recto verb. I, uh, Art got one, and he actually brought it, and I played on it, and it was cool. So I would get the little mini recto verb, because it looks more like an actual amp head with, um, you know, like a wooden enclosure and not the little mini metal one. Mm -hmm. But I think they're great. Actually, I wanted the little recto verb combo they have. That would be perfect. I would eyeballed that many times, but didn't buy it. I looked at it, but I didn't buy it. But mm. I think... <laughs> I think they're great. I like them. Thanks for the question, Paul. <laughs> Final question. Final question. Cam Deman. Hey, RNA. Hope all is well. Wife is currently 16 weeks pregnant and doing great. Awesome. Good. That's good to hear, man. I noticed that you two lead worship for church. We do the same thing. She sings and I play guitar. My question this week is... Do you think it is looked down on if you bring your electric guitar instead of an acoustic? <laughs> Our church is very small and I don't need the power, but playing on the acoustic gets dull after a while and at times limiting. Any thoughts? Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Depends on your denomination. <laughs> it depends on the church that you go to, mm -hmm. I would say. Now, um, where I play, we don't even have an acoustic. We have a piano. We have two electric guitars and a bass and a drummer and a plethora of singers. <laughs> so there is no acoustic at our church, mm -hmm. which is fine. No one's ever complained or said, hey, you should bring an acoustic. Mm -hmm. um, when I first was hired to play there, I asked the music director, who is phenomenal, master's degree from North Texas and piano organ guy. I'm like, hey, all right, so what do you want? Uh, acoustic or electric? He's like, whatever you want to play. Okay. <laughs> I will play electric because that's what I like. He's like, okay, great. And then I got there and they gave me the charts. I'm like, all right, so anything you want me to do is like, just do your thing. Play what you want. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you what to play. You, you just play. And I'm like, I like you, Mark. Mm -hmm. He's a great guy. I mean, he was a, a learned guy. Like he knew his crapola, but he didn't want to tell me what to do. He's like, you just play. Just do your thing. Awesome. So that worked out great for me. Mm -hmm. um, almost any church I've ever played in, 90% of the time I play electric. There are some times where we'd sing where it was just Angela singing and a guitar and that was it. The only instrumentation is one voice and one instrument. And in those situations I did acoustic guitar because it just, it fit the vibe better. Yep. But nobody's ever really told me necessarily do one or the other. So I guess I've been pretty lucky in that. Um, I prefer electric, but it depends on the church and it depends on your instrumentation. Like if you have a band there's a drummer and there's a bass player, at least. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing electric. Um, if it's just voice and an instrument and that's it, acoustic probably fits the vibe better. Yeah. Although I understand your frustration <laughs> of having to play it, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to do some other things. Yep. Um, I don't. It's not looked down on where I've played, but. We said that earlier, there's so many different churches, so many different ways of doing things and so many different approaches. It really just depends, you know. I think you just have to know the group that you're in. Um, usually, not always, but usually if it's a predominantly older group, they don't care for the electric guitar. Mm -hmm. um, if your electric guitar looks more classic sounding, then they'll, they have a tendency to be okay with it. If you got a Strat or a Tele. You know, but if it looks more, you know, yeah. Um, look like you just literally bit a, you know, a head off of a, a <laughs> bat, <laughs> then I don't think that they'll be really <laughs> open to that. But again, it depends on your style and how you play. And if you make it too busy or if you're up there and you're just wailing and doing a whole bunch really, of... Really, really. <laughs> yes, it, you know, but if it's just the same, but it's because, you know, it's lighter strings and it's just easier, it's better, easier on your hands. I think any church 
would be understanding as long as it doesn't get too loud where the hearing aids ring or you know the feedback hurts, hurts the hurts the baby's ears you know depending on who, who you're with but um so you don't you want to make sure you know what your the congregation that you're playing for is prepared for and understands but i think if you're just open with the, especially the leaders of the church i think that they're pretty for the most part it just seems like they're more okay with everything as long as you tell you know let yeah. let them know um i was flashing back to yeah. the baptist church when the old guy who had the hearing aid mm -hmm. the hearing aid was feeding back in the middle of wee, and he didn't even know it because he's like you got this hearing aid right up here and we're all just like hey somebody turn his hearing aid off yeah. it's like it wasn't the guitars that were frustrating no. it was yeah, because it, 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 you know, it, you know, you have to think about all those things. Mm -hmm. Now, it does depend. Like, it's kind of odd because the church that I play at, there is a, a reasonable number of older people. That's why who, I said it depends. Who come to the earlier service, and which is where we do the contemporary stuff. Yeah. And not very often, but every now and then we'll have a song, we'll have a little break, and I'll get a little, little, you yeah, know. Yeah, but it's not like. It's not all the time. Standing up and making <laughs> smoke it, machine yeah. and all that, but anytime there's something just, like that, it's just like a little bit of you know. Yeah, but anytime there's frills and trills, something like that with the guitar kind of breaking it. Oh, my eyes are water. Mm -hmm. Kind of never fails that after the service, usually an older person will come and go, "Hey, I like that guitar," and I'm like, "Oh, thanks, mm -hmm. awesome." <laughs> so it's kind of funny because you'd think no, they don't, but it seems like a lot of them are like. I dig that guitar part of me. Again, it depends on where you're at. It depends on who you're in front of. But it does depend. It depends. So those are our thoughts. Congrats on the baby. Hope everything yes. keeps going well. Yep. You know, exciting, yep. exciting we'll times for sure. Pray for baby and mama and dad. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's going to be great. Everybody forgets to pray for dad on that whole thing because you're carrying a lot of burden as the leader of the home to. Make sure your wife and newborn is okay. We do stress out sometimes. A little bit. It's true. Occasionally. And that's the final question. <laughs> Thanks for all the questions, y'all. And if you have a question for next week, leave it below. And if you have some thoughts or comments on any of the other questions we answered this week, please leave your comments below as well. Mm -hmm. Leave your answers to these questions. And we will try to answer all the new ones next week. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Thank you for everyone who ordered an RA Music shirt. We got quite a few orders in this week for new tees. Thank you so much. I found, uh, I did find on Twitter, mm -hmm. I found one, some, Nolan, who put up a picture on Twitter of his shirt. I just saw it today. Awesome. It was from two months ago because I never get on my, there's an RA Music Twitter, but I just never Sweet. go into it. But anyway. But if I find some pictures of shirts, we'll put them up at the end of this video because I thought that was fun mm -hmm. last week seeing them all. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want one, link in the description in the, this video. You can get yours. And uh, yeah. And we will see you all next week. Until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Music needs you. And you need the music. Oh, man. So bad. Yeah. And we need to keep it alive. For the next generation of guitar players and piano players and singers and drummers and bassists. And ukuleleists mm -hmm. and everyone and who wants to play an instrument. instruments in between. Yeah. For all ages. Younger kiddos starting out and the more mature beginner players. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. Bye. <laughs>